So this is now the fourth video uh, in the MailChimp implementation process. We've uh, installed it, we've authenticated, we've mapped, uh, and we're now going to talk about permission sets. But one thing I realized uh, after the last video was that we didn't go back in, and it's worth noticing that if you go into the leads area, um, and this was kind of prior to conversion, I took, a, took, took this shot, and what I see is I had two, and then after conversion, um, what I then had is three. So we picked up Deborah Sunrise, who was the, uh, the lead that was in our MailChimp subscriber list, but not yet in Salesforce. If we look at the contacts, though, we do have a, a Debbie Sunrise uh, as opposed to a, a Deborah Sunrise, and different email address, and so that's part of our challenge is that leads may come into the system and we need to figure out whether or not they're duplicates or actually they, they need to be converted. Uh, so that'll be, you know, anyway, that's the, the first step. Now we're going to move on to permission sets, and permission sets are part of, of settings, so you can get there through the setup, uh, and if you go to the administration users area, you'll find uh, permission sets. Uh, we're also going to come at it from users. That's the way the uh, MailChimp instructions go. But I just want to show you permission sets because I think this is an important thing to know about. Um, so if we click, oh, actually, just as background, I pulled this screenshot, which is looking at, at permission sets. And uh, it has a nice graphic which says if you've got, a, a, for example, a sales user profile and they currently have, um, you know, recreate edit access to leads, and what you want to do is to add delete access and, uh, and transfer leads. Um, then you can always create a different profile, but then you have to manage that. So it may be simpler to do it as part of a permission set, which would just give them these additional um, functions. And so if we're looking out at, uh, um, at the permission sets that are available here, we do find there's a, a MailChimp admin and a MailChimp user. Now the difference is that a MailChimp admin uh, can view the MailChimp data within Salesforce. It can also use the query builder to build queries uh, where uh, the user can only view the data, doesn't have access to the query builder. Um, so we can, by selecting one of these, let's say we select the admin, um, what we're then able to see is is this, which is where we can uh, can can actually modify and change this permission set. But if we want to do is just to is to manage the assignments, we can select there, and by adding assignments, we can add all those individuals that we would want to have access as a Mailchimp admin, which they recommend everybody has. Uh, it's interesting they say uh, everybody should have both, although. Certainly, uh, you know, admin supersedes, but that's okay. We won't worry about that one for now. Um, let's, uh, uh, so what we're going to do is to go at it from, um, you know, a different perspective, which is if we come at it from the users and we select users and then we select a single user. So I'm going to go in with, with awesome admin. Uh, what we're going to see is that looking at their permission sets, we have, have two, which are both task gray. Uh, and you can tell because of this layout, this is part of the kind of the classic versions. This may have changed by the time you watch this. Um, but again, the goal is to, to edit assignments. It's going to be probably a related tab, um, so you may see it that way. Uh, but by clicking Edit Assignment, what we end up getting is this screen, which allows us to add the MailChimp admin and add the MailChimp user. Uh, we save that, and then the the admin, or this awesome admin user, has access to these permission sets. And now we can move on to um, synchronizing. Uh, 